And we are live. Welcome to Olivia's Stories, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes it's better to start looking at someone's background before you get them into your life. I mean, they say intimacy is the most powerful thing that is shared by two people who love each other. So when someone shares their body with their partner, then they go outside their relationship and share their body and soul with another person. I don't understand it. I know that in African countries, it is believed that when you share your body with someone else, it means you exchange energy with that person. Either good or bad energy, just like if you sleep or share a body with a witch or someone with negative energy, the energy will simply be transferred to you. I mean, how you would risk yourself like that. No matter how much your partner is, you have to respect him, her. Respect the vows that you had made before God and your loved ones. I know I am an arrogant person at times, but what my wife did really hurt me to a point that I somehow doubted myself and my capabilities as a man. Every man wants to marry a faithful, respectful, submissive, and loving person. A person who would be able to warm your house and make it feel like home. A wife who respects herself and her relationship. Okay, if she was not getting satisfied anymore or she was getting bored, why not communicate with your partner and address the issues than to go out of your marriage and take your marital problems to another person? So you take your problems and use them to destroy another woman's marriage. Where's self-respect and dignity there? I know someone once went through what I also went through. Please tell me how you dealt with it. But before that, let me tell you what had happened. So I, M35, met my gorgeous wife, F28, in Starbucks. She worked there. When I met her, I was late for work. I wanted a latte to go to start my busy morning. I walked in there and she was minding her own business, not taking care of her customers. I called out for her to get assistance as I was standing for almost five minutes. Not being assisted, then she started speaking. Her voice was so calm and sweet, she explained herself and told me she was new there. I just ordered a latte with coconut milk. I couldn't stop thinking about her. I'm a real estate agent. I sell luxury houses in Beverly Hills. I work for Prestige California Houses Agency. I love my job, but I was also working on starting my own agency. I do have a couple of properties in LA as my backup investment. That morning when I saw Maureen, my wife, I was meeting a very important client, but this gorgeous woman was stuck in my mind the whole day. So I went to Starbucks hoping I would see her. I mean, it was before five in the afternoon, I knew she hadn't clocked out. As I predicted, she was serving other people and I waited for her. As soon as I got there, she already knew what I was going to order. I kept going to Starbucks not only for my morning latte, but also to see her. Two weeks passed and I couldn't take her out of my mind, so I decided to shoot my shot. I asked her to go out with me, which took me a lot of begging and promise making. As I was about to give up, she eventually agreed to go out with me. Then she gave me her number. From that day, we were inseparable. We would spend a lot of our free time together. I enjoyed every moment I had spent with her. She would always tell me to be less arrogant because that would make people not like me, LOL. One thing I knew about myself was that I didn't care about what other people thought of me. I mean, I don't need any validation from anyone to be the better me, but she changed all that. She made me soft somehow. She brought the best out of my arrogant self and my love for her kept growing each and every day. We dated for two years and then I proposed to her. I couldn't wait any longer to make her my wife. She was what and who I needed in my life. So we decided to tie the knot two months after I had proposed to her. We moved to a lovely neighborhood in Hollywood after I had proposed to her. I wanted her to be a housewife. I mean, I was afforded and I was providing everything for her. So she didn't need to work at Starbucks anymore because I was already taking care of her in every way possible. As much as she had agreed to become a housewife, she asked me to allow her to start her own business that she was going to run at home. I didn't have any problem with that. She wanted to start an online boutique, so I supported her in her dreams. A year into our marriage, my life changed. I was always busy, but when I got time, I would spend it with my wife. She understood that I was a busy guy, and that was what I loved the most about her. As much as she stayed home all day, she knew how to keep herself busy. She would do workouts in the morning and yoga afterwards before she starts her day. We would never have serious arguments nor fight, but we would argue about small things like decision-making. I mean, I was the man of the house. My marriage has been good ever since we moved to this neighborhood in the north side of Hollywood. My neighbors were kind people and very humble, especially my next door neighbor. 
I found out that he owned a gym that is around our neighborhood and his wife is a book writer. They were the ones who welcomed us when we first moved in, and that was how we got along. We grew to be good friends. My neighbor was the one who introduced us to other neighbors. We would have a neighborhood gathering twice a week called Wine Wednesday. Since I was always busy, I was always late, but my wife was always there. My neighbor was the one who hosted the gathering, so it was hard to say no. Sometimes I would not feel like it, but I had to show up for my wife's sake. As much as my neighbor and I were friends, well, that was what I thought. I had noticed that he had been a little close to my wife. I mean, I was not jealous or anything. Like I said, we grew to be good friends. They would work out at his gym and do yoga together. I thought that was the main reason why they were close. He also had a wife who was young and beautiful, but my wife was a dime, I had to say. He once came to fix my kitchen sink since it was leaking and I wasn't around, so my wife asked him to fix it. I got angry and asked her why she didn't call the plumber. She told me that I was overreacting and that the neighbor's wife was at the house, so she told her that the kitchen sink was leaking, meaning she was the one who asked her husband to fix it for us. She even told me that they were being friendly and helpful since I was always busy. Yeah, right, something wasn't right. The tone of her voice sounded like she was rehearsing to say this the whole day. I just collected myself and told her that next she should call the plumber. Was I exaggerating about this whole thing? Ever since that day, our relationship hasn't been the same and I wondered why. We would talk and spend some time together like we would do, but that time something was different, I felt. I'm a man that has a good instinct and I believed and trusted in my instincts. So if my conscious instinct told me that something was wrong, there was definitely something wrong. All of a sudden, she started buying new clothes and a new set of perfumes. She changed a lot to a point that every Wine Wednesday, she would be wearing a different outfit dressed to impress with a red lipstick. I addressed the issue trying to trap her in a conversation, but she said she was trying something new since she was always home. I trusted her. I knew she wouldn't do me dirty. If I had a day off, I would go to the gym and work out with them, but every time when I joined them, it would get awkward. I got promoted at my job and I was made senior partner because of my work ethics. New position means a new schedule of back-to-back -back meetings. And also I started arriving late at home. I no longer went to the gathering like before as I was caught up at work. My life transformed and took another trajectory. My wife and I started to argue more often because I would sometimes not keep promises because I would forget. She no longer understood my work and she started being paranoid, suspecting me of cheating on her at work. I mean, I love my wife very much to even think of that. Work was keeping me on my feet, so where would I have got time to cheat? I respected my job, my wife, and my colleagues, which was why I had never even shared a hug with them. I was always professional when it came to my job. That's when I started suspecting that my wife might be cheating on me. The sudden change I felt like I was being compared to. Well, time went by and I started to realize my wife was always on her phone like she was waiting for someone to text back. Also, she started to work out twice a day in the morning and afternoon, which raised my suspicions. She then changed her diet, but she hasn't stopped dressing to impress. I wondered why the sudden change because I had never complained about her weight or dressing code. Something was definitely going on. Was I also getting paranoid? Another thing I once caught was my neighbor staring at her. Well, she didn't notice that the neighbor was staring at her, but I ignored it. So one day I saw them talking to each other, but what caught my attention was their eye contact. I guess my wife didn't see me coming until she heard the neighbor greeting me. She got shocked and kind of panicked. Why would she be shocked and panicking if there was nothing going on between them? I then knew that I had to be a gentleman and not jump into drastic conclusions, meaning I had to address the issue in a right manner. So I did what every man who loved his wife would do. I told her that she should stop going to wine Wednesday, which led to a very huge argument. I also wanted to cancel going to the neighbor's gym, but I didn't want to be seen as controlling, and I sensed that something was happening between those two. So I had to dig and start my own investigation to get to the bottom of everything. I mean, my guts were telling me that whatever I would find would not be good. Yeah. It would have been silly if I sent a private investigator to monitor my wife's every move. So I had to play the long game so I could catch them by myself. So I started arriving home at different times. Some days I would just park five houses away from my house just to see who was visiting my wife. I was desperate and needed answers, but to my surprise, I got nothing, meaning she played it safe around the neighborhood. I still had doubts. I knew something was up, so I decided to go to the gym one afternoon 
and to my surprise, my wife wasn't there, including my neighbor. So I rushed home and she wasn't there either. My mind started puzzling up as I was trying to figure out her whereabouts. I tried calling her phone, but it went straight to voicemail. That raised the suspicions that I had already had. It really made me angry that my wife would actually betray me like that. I mean, I trusted her. Yes, I was no longer giving her enough time and attention because of work, but that didn't mean she should get attention on another man's arms. Was I paranoid? The way my wife had changed, it made me doubt my decisions of making her my wife and moving to this neighborhood. I mean, it had been my dream to move to the north side of Hollywood, but I had never thought me moving to this side would actually change my wife. I had thought she was humble and quiet, but I had thought wrong. Another thing that I had noticed but never put my mind to was when I got home. She was no longer meeting me from my car to welcome me back home, like she would wait for me at the door and give me a kiss. She would prepare me a nice bath after work, then it would be followed by a mouth-watering dinner. I fell in love with her every day. I appreciated the way she was treating me and giving me respect as her man. But all that changed over time. In fact, it changed after attending a few Wine Wednesday gatherings. Sir. I trusted her, you know. I had thought that since she was coming from a good family with good life lessons, she would follow and take what she was taught with her. When we started getting along, she was so humble, so precious and innocent. She made me vow to myself to never hurt her fragile and innocent heart. She made me put my arrogant self aside and think like a real man. Yes, I have been in relationships with different women, but none of them were a match to what Maureen was offering and how she was treating me. Some of the women I had dated were just in a relationship with me for money. They loved what I was offering, not me as I was. And there was this other one that I had dated. She had a wife material qualities just like Maureen, I loved her, but I was still chasing dollars and didn't have much time with her, so she stayed until she got tired and decided to leave. I found out two months later that she was engaged with someone else. But when I found Maureen, I saw that my previous girlfriend had nothing compared to her. Maureen was the full package of wife material. She brought the best out of me. She made me value time and give her attention she needed without even trying. One thing I appreciated and still appreciate about my ex-girlfriend was that she was never afraid to raise her concerns and had warned me so many times about my obsession with work. She told me that she was getting tired of having to wait for me every time when I had to chase the papers. She even told me her fears, expectations, and the type of man she wanted in her life. She was never afraid to tell you the truth as it was just like Maureen, but Maureen never raised her concerns. She would just keep quiet and pretend like everything was fine when they were not. She preferred bottling things up in her chest and not sharing them with me as her partner. I know I was not a perfect husband, but I needed her to open up. <laughs> anyway, when I found out that she was not at home either, I called the neighbor's wife and asked if my wife was with her. I was getting worried even though I knew that she was up to no good. So the neighbor's wife confirmed that Maureen was not with her. Then I decided that it was time I became an FBI on my wife because what she was doing was against the vows she had made to me and God and the neighbor was also breaking his wife. It was an absolute disgusting abomination. So I waited until she came back, which she came back pretty late. I knew that she was with the neighbor because when I called the wife, she told me that she had gone home to visit her family. She came back looking drunk, greeted me, and went to our bedrooms en suite. She didn't even look me in the eyes or offer me a kiss. It was like she was guilty of something. So I decided to check her phone, and to my surprise, she had changed her passcodes which raised eyebrows to me because she had never changed her passcodes. I mean, she was my wife. We trusted each other, meaning there should be no secrets between us. She knew my passcodes, even my bank pins. That was how much I trusted her. So I took it upon myself to find a way to check her phone because it showed that she was definitely hiding something and I was yet to find out. I prayed that it wouldn't be something that would jeopardize our relationship and break our marriage. A month passed with her behaving like a teenager, sneaking in when I was asleep and going out when I was at work. So I called the CCTV company and asked them to connect the cameras around the house and put another one outside facing the neighbor's house. I knew it was creepy of me, but I had to find out what was happening in my house when I was at work. There is a proverb that says, what happens in the dark always finds its way to the light. So what I was doing was putting what was happening in the dark to light. Smart, right? The following day, the IT guys came and did their job. 
my heart and conscience was happy that I would be able to discover the truth that my wife had been hiding. Nothing stays hidden forever anyway, so it was either I find it myself or get someone else to find it for me. But because I respected my wife and our marriage, I decided to dig the truth out for myself. To tell the truth, I was not ready to find out what I had found, but I had to know what my so-called wife was hiding from me. My palms would sweat, my heart beating out of my chest, as I had to check the footage every time I got home from work. One thing I was grateful for with these cameras was that I was able to even watch what was happening in my house when I was at work. My wife's behavior really made me act like an obsessed psycho or a stalker. I didn't want to awaken the arrogant animal that was in me because if I did, I would have acted rashly and end up hurting Maureen for something I had no proof of. I started being an arrogant person when I was still in high school. I was bullied a lot because I had come from a poor background and my parents couldn't afford my fees, so I was helped by a scholarship. It was not easy having to deal with bullies at school and to deal with the absent father, though he was there. I don't know if you will understand what I am trying to say. I then told myself that no matter what I did, I would do it for my mother and be arrogant like my father because it helped him a lot. People would not take advantage of him because they knew that once you try to provoke him, it would be World War VII and he never cared about anyone else but him. Anyway, enough about my past. So I got home and went to my mini office. That day I had found Maureen at home. She even prepared dinner for us, which was very surprising because I don't know when last I had eaten dinner prepared by her. In my mind, the only thing that came was that she was home because the neighbor's wife was around. That was the only explanation I could come up with. So I watched the footage and saw that that day she was bored as she was home the whole day. At the neighbor's house, I saw that the neighbor had gone with the wife, which explained why Maureen was indoors the whole day. So when she was done preparing dinner, I joined her, so we had a small conversation. You would see that the conversation I was trying to make was boring her, so I decided to drop a bomb at her just to see her reaction. I told her that I was ready to start my own family, as in having children with her. She choked on her food and told me that she was not ready for a child. I didn't understand why she was not ready to have a child because she was doing nothing rather than sitting at home, checking on her online boutique than nothing else. I asked why she was not ready to give me a child. She just told me that she still had a lot to do and that a child was the last thing on her plan book. I knew that what she was saying was a lie. It's every woman's dream to have their own family. Well, not all women's dreams, but you know what I mean? I needed an heir to continue with my legacy. I was not getting any younger, so I needed to have a child that would carry on with my property business. As much as I was working under another real estate company, under another man. I still had another backup plan for future purposes. A few weeks later, I was still checking the footage every now and then. So as I was watching it, I saw my wife going inside the neighbor's house wearing her short silk gown. I got confused on why she would go to the neighbor's house with a short silk gown early in the morning because when I checked the time, it was not even 10 in the morning. Meaning I had been gone for an hour because I used to arrive at work around eight in the morning. What I saw made me angry. I couldn't even concentrate at work because I was busy thinking about the footage. I was disappointed at my wife. I never took her as a whoring type. One day I decided to confront her about the issue, so I asked what she was doing at a neighbor's house at 10 in the morning whenever the neighbor's wife was not around. She just busted on me and asked if I was accusing her of something. Her voice was of a guilty person and I knew that she was really hiding something. So I asked why she was being defensive because I was asking calmly and she just got worked up for no reason. She even got angry at the fact that I was spying on her. Who wouldn't spy on a wife that suddenly changed and started degrading herself? I had been saving the videos since I started watching them. I don't know why, but I felt like I would save them for future purposes. So as I continued following up on what was going on in my house, things didn't change. And the fact that my wife would wake up, take a bath and go straight to the neighbor's house, either in her short silky nightdress, or she would wear workout gears to make people think she was going to the gym. Have you ever regretted the day you and the person met? Yes, I regretted meeting my wife and falling in love with her. I regretted even getting her service at Starbucks. But I guess beauty and personality can be deceiving because what I would always look at when I was at work or came back from work was the total opposite of the Maureen that I had fallen in love with. She was a whole different person, the one I fell in love with, always natural and always not afraid to embrace it, but now that the neighbor's wife was the person of class. 
My wife forgot who she was and started wanting what the neighbor's wife had. She even started wearing like her all in the name of trying out new looks. Isn't that being greedy and selfish? What I lacked or didn't do that would make my wife resort to changing herself and not appreciate the life she had. Days turned to weeks and one thing was happening, but during one sunny day, my neighbor would come to my house and they would end up having heated arguments. I wished I heard what they were arguing about because it looked really extreme. So that day I got back home early and I found my wife cooking. She looked happy for someone who had an argument with her cheating partner earlier. She offered to prepare me a bath. I thought I was losing my mind or seeing things, but that went on for like a month. And the CCTV showed that she had changed her schedule routine of going to the neighbor's house. I mean, the guy was working from home, so there was no way he was not at the house and because my wife was still going there and came back earlier than before. I thought they had broken things off and came back to their senses because my wife started spending less time at the neighbor's house till she totally stopped. She became the wife I had fallen in love with, a natural and respectful Maureen, but my guts were telling me that all that she was doing was an act. She started engaging in intimacy with me. Well, I had missed her, so I played along. I somehow forgot that she was cheating on me with the neighbor. I was a fool, right? I just wanted and needed my wife back home to me. But when we got here, she saw the opportunity to change and not change for the better. Our intimate moments were on fire. She even started introducing some new intimate moves in our bedroom. She was kind of wild and to my surprise, I liked it. So one weekend we were spending time together. I had noticed the changes in her body. She was getting chubbier. She would choose what to eat and not eat. And she started hating my cologne. She asked me to change it. I got worried about that sudden change it didn't come to me that she was pregnant, so I asked if she was okay. She told me that she would be okay once I had stopped using the cologne that I was using. I then told her that I would take her to the doctor. She just flipped and told me that she was fine. She didn't need any doctor. I knew my wife was like the back of my hand, so I knew that something was definitely up because she got angry for no reason and was constantly vomiting. Was I that ignorant to see the symptoms of pregnancy in her? I took some days off at work to take care of my sick wife. She would tell me that she was coming down with flu or she needed to reflux her digestive system. She said she was suspecting that she had bile. I mean, if you had bile and came down with flu, she would have agreed to go to the doctor and get medications for it, right? One day when she was sleeping, I was trying to clean up the house and it was the day of the garbage truck. So as I was getting rid of the garbage that was in our bedroom, I dropped something by mistake and that something was actually a pregnancy test in a paper that was written safe abortion. I looked at my wife with a lot of disgust and disappointment. I knew that if she was pregnant with my child, she would have told me, and the pregnancy test was stating that she was five weeks, meaning she had gotten pregnant before she came back to her senses. I was angry at the fact that she had fooled me. She was going to plant the pregnancy on me and make me take responsibility for a child that was not mine because she had talked to me about her being ready to be a mother two weeks before I found out about the tests. I felt like the biggest fool because I was somehow happy at the fact that she was finally ready to carry my child, but she was already carrying one and it was not mine. I continued being the caring and loving husband, but I knew that I had to surprise both of them because the neighbor had made his wife a fool and I was also made a fool by my wife. So one wine Wednesday, I went to attend it. That day, my wife didn't make it saying she was not feeling well, so I went alone. When I got there, the neighbor's wife welcomed me. We started talking about random things and told me that she was happy that she was finally pregnant after trying for almost five years with her husband. So the bastard had hit two birds with one stone, the nerve. Without acting rational and suspenseful, I told the wife that there was something that I had wanted to discuss with her. I had to lie and tell her that I needed her to write me a book about me and my achievements. I told her that it was time I take full responsibility and focus on my property business because it was also doing well, but I was still enjoying working at Prestige California Houses Agency. The neighbor's wife agreed to write me a book, so I asked her to come by to my office when she was free. Luckily, she had taken a leave of absence at her workplace, so she came to the office the following day. I asked her nicely that she shouldn't share what we were going to do with her husband because I didn't want my wife to know either, which she understood. So I woke up early and went to the office. The neighbor came to my house. He and my wife started arguing about something. As I was busy watching the neighbor's wife get in my office, 
and apologize for being late due to traffic. I understood, and we started working. I then gave her my laptop and asked her nicely not to panic and think of her unborn child. She got confused at first until she saw the video. What caught my attention was that. The neighbor and my wife were no longer arguing, but they were doing the deed on my couches. I got pretty angry and didn't know what to do. I wanted to destroy something, but I had to act calm for the sake of my neighbor's wife and her unborn child. She was already crying a mess, and I felt bad because the guy was two-timing a good woman who did nothing but to love his cheating ass. Some guys are just ungrateful. I had to calm the neighbor's wife down and asked her to help me stop whatever that was happening in our houses. She was livid but managed to calm down after some time. We decided to head back home, so we rescheduled the meeting for another time. I told her that we would go to my house so we would find both of them. She agreed, and when we got there, I had a spare key with me, so I opened the door. As we got in the house, we found both the neighbor and my wife sleeping peacefully and cuddling on my couch. My heart dropped. I was mixed in emotions. I was angry, disappointed, hurt, and I don't know how I would put it, but I was not myself. I was brought back by the neighbor's wife shouting at the neighbor. She started making noise and causing a scene. I understood her frustrations and hurt. She started hitting her husband with everything that she saw was in front of her. I looked at my wife with disappointed and hurt eyes. She couldn't even look at me in my eyes. I then went to my mini office to take out the pregnancy test that she had taken and took it with me where everyone was. I gave the neighbor the test and an abortion paper and told him to take responsibility for the mess he had created, but that didn't happen before I gave him a very mean punch. I didn't want to hit Maureen because of her condition, but I don't know what I would have done if she was not pregnant. I told to pack her rags and get out of my house. She started apologizing and telling me that it was a mistake. She got tempted because I was not always home, so she got lonely, and one thing led to another. I didn't care about her explanation, but I wanted her gone, and gone far away from me before I committed a homicide. I then called my lawyer and asked her to draft divorce papers for me. The neighbor's wife was crying so much to a point that she started getting pains. I saw blood going down her legs. I knew there and then that we had a problem. So I decided to rush her to the hospital and told Maureen that I didn't want to see her when I came back and threatened to murder her and her boyfriend if anything happened to the neighbor's wife. When we got to the hospital, we were told that she came in late and she had already lost a child. I don't know why I felt hurt, but I was hurt and felt guilty for her pain and sorrow. Ever since then, I regretted the actions I had taken. I should have thought of her condition first, but I was clouded by hurt, anger, and was hungry for vengeance, not thinking of the consequences of my actions. A part of me wished that it was Maureen who lost a child, but God decided to make an innocent person suffer like that. Since today, I'm still feeling guilty about the neighbor's innocent unborn. Do you guys think I took a rational and selfish decision by handling things the way I did? because I feel like I'm the only one who feels guilty.